The H-13, or HTL Bell helicopter, has three main sources of vibration. The main rotor assembly, which operates at approximately three cycles per second. The tail rotor assembly, which operates at approximately 12 cycles per second. And the tail rotor drive shaft and engine and fan assembly, which operates at approximately 40 cycles per second. Each assembly produces a distinctive vibration since each operates at a different speed. You can tell when all three assemblies are functioning properly by the normal vibration transmitted to the controls and airframes. And when any one assembly malfunctions, the resulting abnormal vibration helps determine the cause. The main rotor assembly, because of its large mass weight, causes the most noticeable abnormal vibration. Since it rotates comparatively slowly, its vibrations are referred to as low frequency. Some low frequency vibrations are two to one, but most are one to one. That is, one vibration or beat for each revolution of the rotor system. This one to one beat is felt approximately three times per second, slow enough to count and identify. One-to-one -one vibrations caused by a blade out of track are vertical and are transmitted to the entire fuselage. You feel an up and down vibration, usually in the floor or seat. It generally increases with air speed. It may not be present in hovering, but is present in all other maneuvers. Another check is to watch the antenna grommet and the door frame. If both vibrate vertically at the same rate, you definitely have a blade out of track. This vertical one-to-one -one should not be confused with the normal two-to-one vertical vibration sometimes felt during final portions of an approach. Any abnormal vibration should be written up as a discrepancy. Always note the flight conditions under which the vibration occurs. Normally, the difficulty can be eliminated by adjusting the blade setting and tracking the blade. One-to-one -one vibrations caused by the blade being out of spanwise balance are transmitted as a lateral vibration to the airframe. You feel the lateral in the floor and seat as a rolling or rocking motion. Also, the door frames will vibrate vertically, 180 degrees out of phase. When out of balance, this one-to-one -one lateral is present in all maneuvers, and its intensity does not change with speed. Sometimes this is a temporary condition due to moisture buildup in one blade. If the vibration persists after a normal flight, write it up. Caution. Never continue to fly with any severe abnormal vibration. If the blades are out of cordwise balance, a lift differential will occur on either the advancing or retreating side, depending on whether the blade is displaced forward or aft. This causes a one-to-one -one lateral, which you feel while hovering. The lateral vibration increases with forward speed. And usually, one door frame will vibrate while the other door frame remains constant. Normal main rotor feedback forces are dampened by the irreversible. During your cockpit check, if the controls are too loose, the irreversible is loose. If the stick pressure is uneven, the irreversible concern has a high spot. When you are airborne, both irreversibles and bad dampers will result in a feedback when the stick is moved. The feedback is especially noticeable when entering translational lift. The combination of ground and airborne symptoms will help you isolate the cause of the feedback. 
They'll check the irreversibles first. If they check out okay, the feedback may be caused by bad dampers. Faulty dynamic stop cables can transmit rotor system vibrations. If both dynamic stop cables are too short and you move the stick rapidly, you feel a brief two to one thump in the stick. If you over control in hovering or in a sharp turn and feel a one to one beat in the direction of stick movement, one of your dynamic stop cables is too short. This cross-section shows normal engine sprag cables. If one or more cables is too short and you attempt to turn, a two-to-one vibration will be transmitted to the airframe. You feel it in the floor and seat. The direction of turn will determine which cable is too short. In your write-up, describe the symptoms. Don't guess at the cause. The second main source of vibration is the tail rotor assembly. This assembly transmits medium frequency vibrations at approximately 12 cycles per second. This is too fast to count, but it can be identified. You feel it in the rudder pedals and occasionally in the floor. You may also feel a binding, jerky response to rudder pedals. The symptoms could result from any one of several causes tail rotor blade out of track or out of balance, binding pitch change control links, binding flapping hinge bearing, worn or missing neoprene bumper washer, or a malfunction in the tail rotor gearbox. Vibrations transmitted by the tail rotor drive shaft and engine and fan assembly are referred to as high frequency. You feel a very fast vibration or buzz in the floor and seat. Possible causes are faulty lord mounts, bent or missing fan blade, malfunction of the fan drive shaft, loose or missing fan assembly mounting bolts, or faulty tail rotor drive shaft. Another type of vibration originating in this assembly is caused by a faulty plug or magneto. You feel in the floor and seat an occasional intermittent vibration, and the nose will sometimes oscillate slightly to the left. These symptoms are especially pronounced with maximum power settings and are sometimes accompanied by a burbling sound from the exhaust. In analyzing vibrations, you first decide whether the symptoms are caused by internal malfunction or are induced by outside forces. Remember, a heavy-handed pilot can induce vibrations simply by erratic control movement. So can atmospheric conditions, such as a strong variable wind or severe turbulence on a hot day. A crosswind will sometimes induce tail rotor vibrations. If you are certain you have an internal malfunction, analyze the vibration according to its frequency and type. Remember, low frequency vibrations will be either two to one or one to one, slow enough to count. Medium frequency vibrations are felt in the rudder pedals and occasionally in the floor. High frequency vibrations occur so fast you feel a very high frequency buzz, usually in the floor and seat. If your write-up is accurate and concise, the difficulty can be quickly corrected. When you encounter abnormal vibrations in various combinations, write up the easiest to identify first, so it can be eliminated first.
than any other vibrations present. Remember, you should land and investigate any severe abnormal vibrations.